Okay, folks, joining me right now is one of my favorite actresses of all time, the incredible, the beautiful, the intelligent, Karen Parsons right here. Karen, is this your first time here in New England for these Comic-Con events? For this Comic-Con, yeah, it is. Now, you've had done a lot of television work like Merrill's Place and Blossom, and I want to know what were those experiences like doing uh, iconic shows like that? Well, the show that I did mostly was The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, so if that, with my experience with that um, was incredible. It was life-changing for me. Yeah, you were Hillary Banks, one of the great characters, uh, working with such an outstanding cast like Will Smith and uh, James Avery and all that. And what was the experience like all those years and those seasons with that great cast? Um, it was, well, it was, it, like I said, it was a life-changing event, the entire thing. And I, I, those, all the people in the cast and crew, many of them became like family to me. So it was a very, you know, we bonded, I learned a lot, the writers were incredible. Uh, it was just... Um, like I said, I learned a lot. I learned a lot as a person. I learned a lot as an actor. And we had a tremendous amount of fun, which I think comes through is why the show's been as successful as it has. Do you still keep in contact with any of the actors from the show? I do. I do. I talk, I, uh, Tatiana Ali is actually on the board of my organization, Sweet Blackberry. Um, Alfonso I see and talk to whenever I'm in Los Angeles or he's in New York. We always you know, see each other. Same with Tatiana. James Avery and I were very close. I used to see him whenever I'd go to L.A. Um, and Joe Marcel, when he's in the States, I, I try to see him. And Daphne and I, are we just talked to Daphne a couple weeks ago, so I think I'm going to see her pretty soon. Will, I, try, I talk, we, we communicate through text, and I try to see, but he's so busy. I got in one little fight. My mom got scared. We're moving with your auntie and Uncle and Bella. Uh, can we make you do the Carlton dance? I mean, how much is it going to cost? to get you to do the Carlton Day. I mean, how much people have offered you? We want to know. Uh, it would cost a lot. It cost a lot. I, I probably don't have the mu much money that it does. Um, let me ask you, as a fan of some of the television shows today, are there any kind of shows that you like that are on TV today? I'm a big fan. Well, it's not comedy. I'm a big fan. Of, I mean, although I, there's comedy that I love. Like I used to love Key and Peele. I'm a big fan right now. I'm, I'm hooked on binging on the Americans. I'm binging. Yeah. I'm, I'm hooked. Now, you, uh, television has been so different, like the sitcoms of uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the way television is now. Uh, how do you feel about the different, ch you know, like, there's not really sitcoms the way they used to be, so you were somebody that was in there when the television shows were so incredible, and we still go back and watch all this stuff. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is on air every day in New England here, so everybody sees you and your performances. Um, what, are you, what are your opinion of today's television against the one when you guys were doing it? Well, I think on some, in some aspects, television is, is incredible these days. I mean, it's we've got like film caliber productions and really um, intricate storylines really in depth over the over the course of you know of a six year period you'll just have this really in depth show so on that level i think it's i think it's great at the same time unfortunately there's kind of um there's a missing segment and that's been pointed out to me i don't follow a lot because i'm i just follow my kids and what my kids are watching mostly um but there aren't this the sitcom you know worked for a lot, of, for so many people, for so long, and I think, um, I think, it, I think that it's it's missing. It's starting to come back, which I think is really good and really welcomed by people. Um, it's definitely a show that families can watch together, and I think that that's something that everyone looks forward to. Mm -hmm. I want to know who was your influence. What made you want to become an actress when you were when you were a child and going to become a teenager, and then you got into acting and stuff like that? What was your passion came out? Who made you? Who influenced you? Who were some of your influences? Jodie Foster. Mm -hmm. I was a, I wanted to act since I was a little kid, mm -hmm. and when I watched things, I she was someone who I saw um, time and again, and who was really good, mm -hmm. and that, and inspired me to think I can do that. I can be you know I can be a, an actor too. And so I mean I watched a lot of other things. Like I watched um, I Love Lucy, and I watched Betty Davis films, and I watched lots of old black and white films, and I watched The Little Rascals, you know, as I was watching kids. But I, but I had to see every single thing that Jodie Foster was in. That's awesome. And getting back real quick to your character, Hillary Banks, she was kind of, uh, I don't want to say the word stuck up, but she was rich. She had a lot of money. She was very particular about who she dated, what she did. She always had the finest clothes. Um, how much was the stretch of this character? Uh, what, what did you have to do to become the, I mean, obviously this is very different than you because you're doing the show, so we know you're Sorry. very nice. You're doing the Bob show, so you're very caring and nice and you're not like your character at all. So how did you get into that? How, uh, is there, did you look up things? Did you study? How did you really, I mean, did the writers help with the material they gave you or did you find yourself thinking, okay, well, this is the character I need to be. How do I become Hillary? Well, yeah, the writers obviously first off wrote the character and wrote a really great character. My 
my interpretation of the character was a little bit different than what it was initially, and then they started to write to, more and more to what I was doing, um, probably to what they thought that I could do well. And uh, so it was a collaboration in that regard, and, and it was their, their, they put it out there. I also did have uh, a friend that I kind of looked to a little bit, and in, in, in fun, it was a little bit like a, an homage to her. <laughs> she was from Beverly Hills, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she definitely had a little bit of that stuff. Oh, yeah. And um, I, you know, I grew up in Santa Monica, and there were the... There were, at the time, there was no such thing as a Malibu hide, only in the movies. But there were the girls who came from Malibu, and they had their car, their convertibles, and they were, you know, so I kind of had this idea of what those, because I wasn't one of them. And I kind of had this idea of what that was like, and so that kind of went into it as well. And it was, it was really fun to play, to play against what you, you know, you're trying to be good and you're trying to be polite all the time and considerate. And it was really fun to play against it and to just be this terrible self-centered, you know, not terrible, but te self-centered person. It was really fun. <laughs> you did such a fantastic job at it, let me tell you. So I want to thank you so much for your time. It's a complete honor. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Karen Parsons.